Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're ready to start looking at the solutions of the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom. Remember that we have three functions, one for phi, which is the orbit in the xy plane, one for theta, which was the motion in the z direction, and one for the distance away from the nucleus in the radial motion outward r. So first we're going to start with the solution to this differential equation right here, which we found in the previous video to be equal to that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to find what the value of that function is for various values of m sub l, because it does depend upon m sub l, and that would be the orbital magnetic quantum number. And notice that we already have the solutions drawn on the board for various values for n, l, and m sub l. Now, what we're going to do first is see how we got this value as a solution to the function when m sub l is equal to zero. And of course, that means that we're going to have to find the value for the constant a, and we're going to have to normalize that, so we'll show you how to do that. So first, what we're going to do is take the equation again and say that i, or this function phi, when m sub l is equal to zero, is going to be equal to a times e to the i times zero times phi, yeah, times phi, right, from zero, so m sub l is equal to zero. In other words, if we take that function right there, we can look at it differently as well, we can say, well, the function can also be written in terms of the cosine and the sine, so this could be written as a times the quantity cosine of m sub l phi plus i times the sine of m sub l times phi, and so if we set m sub l equal to zero, that function, when it's written in this format, can be written like this. So the function phi, when m sub l is equal to zero, is equal to a times the cosine of zero plus i times the sine of zero. Now, of course, the sine of zero is zero, the cosine of zero is one, so this becomes equal to a times one, which is simply equal to a. If we leave it in this format, then we plug in the zero for m sub l, e to the zero is equal to one, so you can say that, again, in this format, the function, when m sub l equals zero, is simply equal to a. So now, how do we get that out of that, out of that equation? So this is the wave function, oh, I keep forgetting to write the phi function there. All right, so now to find the value for a, what we're going to do is to find a, We're going to take the integral of the function phi, that would be d phi, and set it equal to 1, right? That's how we normalize it. Oh, oh, by the way, we need to square that. So we're going to normalize it by squaring the wave function and then integrating it and setting it equal to 1. And of course, we know that we need to integrate this from 0 to 2 pi to go all the way around the circle in the xy plane. So what we can do is we can plug in this for that, that means that a squared, the integral of that from 0 to 2 pi, and the differential is d phi, is equal to 1. Of course, the a squared comes out, so that means that a squared times the integral of d phi from 0 to 2 pi is equal to 1. And when we integrate that, we get a squared times phi evaluated from 0 to 2 pi is equal to 1. So finally, we can say that a squared times 2 pi is equal to 1. Now what we're going to do here is solve this for a. So let's come up here. So we can say that a squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi, which means that a is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi. And of course, that's what we expect to see when we look at the list of solutions. So finally, what we can say is that the function, when m sub l is equal to 0, is equal to a times that, or basically is equal to a, and since a is 1 over 2 pi, we can therefore say that the function evaluated when m sub l is equal to, oop, got ahead of myself, is equal to 0, that will be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi, which is what you see in the table there. Anytime you see m sub l equal to 0, the solution for the function in the direction, in the, in the, the phi function, which means in the, the rotational motion in the plane of the xy, uh, in the xy plane, will always be equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi. And that's how it's done.